365 days later, the conflict continues, but Kyiv stands free. Congressman John Garamendi with me now live after a trip to the Ukrainian-Poland border last week. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to be with you, Sean Charest. Your visit to the war zone came almost one year into Russia's invasion. What did you see? What did you hope to accomplish with that visit? Well, we wanted to answer a big question that's in the minds of many, and that is all of this material, and it's about $18 billion of military equipment, has it actually gotten to Ukraine and to the front lines? And so we visited uh, Greece and Romania. About 20% uh, of the equipment flows through those two countries and 80% through Poland. We also visited right up to the uh, Polish-Ukraine border, uh, one of the uh, major airfields there. Uh, and we checked the documentation all the way from the arsenals in the United States and the depots in the United States uh, to the uh, to the border and then beyond. And we came away very satisfied. That, yes, the equipment, the munitions, they are getting through. And I must say the Ukrainians are using them to very, very great effect. You're quite correct. Everybody expected Russia to just roll into Kiev. No, no. American Javelin missiles and uh, Stinger missiles stopped the Russians cold in their tracks because the Ukrainians were trained from, night, from 2014 to that day how to use that equipment. And now we're continuing on. So, yes, mm -hmm. the Ukrainians are actually winning this war. They've retrieved more than 50 percent of the territory that Russia gained in the early days of the war. Okay. And there'll be a spring offensive. What threat do you think that China poses in this situation at this time? Just this week, there was a high-level meeting between President Putin and China's top foreign policy official. Do you think that China is going to give Moscow direct support in this war? I don't think so. China has a lot at risk here. Recognize that this isn't just the United States working on behalf of uh, Ukraine. It's the European Union and NATO. China's biggest customer is the European Union. The second biggest customer uh, for all of their goods is the United States. And so they're not in, they should not be in a mood to really upset their economic apple cart by joining Russia in this war. And beside that, why would they want to join a loser? Clearly, Russia has lost internationally. They're under heavy sanctions of all kinds. And they are also clearly not winning on the battlefield, although they've had for the last uh, month and a half an offense. The Russian offensive is basically stalled out. Uh, the Ukrainians have stalled it. And you're going to see Ukraine going with an offense in the next uh, several weeks. So Russia has, excuse me, China has proposed a 12-part peace deal. Mm -hmm. That's well worth considering. And I'm sure that uh, uh, President Zelensky is. And we'll see what comes of it. But it also is contingent on the removal of sanctions, and I don't know that President Biden is going to be for that. Well, uh, negotiate, negotiate. Absolutely, we're not going to back away from the sanctions on Russia. These sanctions are not just for this war. They are to punish Putin and the Russian economy for starting this war. This is a totally unnecessary war. Uh, it is Putin's... Uh, I don't know, dream that he will be the next czar over the Soviet empire, uh, which basically goes back and dominating uh, Poland, uh, uh, Ukraine for sure, uh -huh. uh, basically making Ukraine part of the Russian uh, empire. So bottom line is that uh, the 12-part proposal is a proposal worth considering. We'll see what happens with it. In the meantime, we need to continue to arm and support Ukraine. This is about democracy. This is about pushing back on a, a dictator mm -hmm. that intends to reestablish the Russian empire. And Sean Charest, if we cut and run, as some of my colleagues are suggesting, if we cut and run, that's a message to Russia to just continue on uh, taking over Ukraine and Moldova and probably even threatening uh, the Baltic states, which they could easily do if we are not there. And by the way, there's China and Taiwan. Taiwan. Mm -hmm. What's the message to Taiwan if we cut and run in, in Ukraine? The message is to, to Taiwan and our other friends in the Pacific is don't count on America. I have we to ask. I have 
have to ask, um, in terms of the, the cut and run scenario that you're laying out, I understand the message it may be sending, but part of the reason why um, some of your colleagues across the aisle are talking about the fact that we need to be reevaluating this, need to moderate this, we're talking about $112 billion appropriated in 2022 alone. And a lot of people feel like that kind of spending just cannot continue, that kind of allocation that we're just going to have to find a way to dial this back. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, that's the gross number. Uh, yes, that is a number that has been made available. Of that, about $18 billion of military equipment, and there's probably twice that much that has been allocated but has not been sent forward because the American military, the Department of Defense, has decided that it wouldn't be particularly useful uh, and that the and therefore it has not gone forward. Uh, the rest of that money is humanitarian aid dealing with the refugee issues uh, and providing uh, financial support to the Ukraine government. Now, I will tell you it's absolutely essential. And if you want to talk about government spending, talk about the tax cuts that the Republicans rammed through in 20. 17, that is well over $1,500,000,000 of reduced revenue to the federal government. 80 to 90 percent of that tax mm -hmm. cut went to the super wealthy and American corporations, of which there are 50 major American corporations that do not pay a nickel mm. in taxes. All right, Congressman. So let's, gonna... get the, let's get the whole story here. We're going to have to put a pin in it there. This is such a huge issue, one that, you know, obviously has 365 days now of perspective. We will, of course, have you back to talk more about this. But there are a lot of predictions that Ukraine will be able to put this war down in the next year. And we will all have to watch and see. We appreciate your time. Anytime. Thank you.